Shall we start? Not many people today. Um, okay, I sent you guys um, two files. One is well the, the Python um, notebook for today, and the other one is a Python recap. Okay, the one um, I show you guys last lesson. So it should be. Um, okay, I didn't have it open. If you if you open the file, um, there are a lot of um, exercises. Okay, there will be a example, and then there will be an exercise. Just um, try to follow it and see if it makes sense. Okay, and then at the end there will be a the quiz that I go through with you guys. You can try it again to see if you can solve it, and hopefully that would help you a bit if you are struggling with Python. Okay. Um, Otherwise, we can start with the class today. Sorry. Um, okay, where is it? Okay, today we're going to talk about um, data visualization and uh, exploratory data analysis. The two is more or less the same thing. Um, but before that, I will talk about uh, the homework, the Harry Potter homework. Okay, I, I said that you guys should head in like uh, next Tuesday, but I think well no point for you guys to spend too much time on this work because I prefer you guys to work on your own uh, projects if you have time. Okay, so um, okay, let's read what the, what's the requirement. Okay, the requirement is I've given you the whole set of uh, Harry Potter um, third, series, third book. And then you need to count the number of paragraphs, sentence, and word. Uh, count the number of times word and alphabet got repeated. And at last, find um, how these characters interact with each other. Okay. So, um, I know some of you had in the homework, but I haven't had, had a chance to look at it yet. Um, okay, first of all, you have to um, read the uh, file into Pandas. Okay. Um, if you forgot what the file looks like, it looks something like this. Just a plain text file. Okay. And there are two ways to read it. One way is pd.readtable. The other way is pd.readfwf. Okay. If you don't know what readfwf means, just go online. And uh, read FWF. <clears throat> okay, every a major Python library has a website like this, and all the functions and all all the parameters will be um, written in here quite detailedly. And at the end, there should always be an example. Not for this one, but yeah, you can try to search online how this works. Okay, the two should give you very similar results. Okay, so now let's look at raw. Okay, raw would be um, pandas like this. Okay. So now we have to think about our first um, challenge, which is to count the number of paragraphs. Um, anyone have any clue how to do this? Count the paragraph. Okay, actually that's quite easy. If you look at the raw file, uh, every chapter start with the word chapter. Okay, so basically how to count the number of chapter is just split the string by the word chapter. Okay. And uh, okay, if you Try to find the header. Look at raw. Okay, 
that's that's the header, and you can find everything by doing this. Okay. But now this is just a list of um, words, and these words are not uh, separated by sentence; they are just separated randomly. So the next thing we have to do is we want to combine them to one string, and okay. Maybe before that, let's just count how many chapters are there, and you can do this. If you do dot apply, that's mean looping over the entire column. Okay. If you do lambda. And then basically the word after is just to check if the word chapter appear um, in the column. Okay, then if you click it, there will be a lot of true and false. And then if you just do a sum out of all of them, okay, it will give you 22. So there should be uh, 22 chapters. Okay. The other way to do it is just um, there are actually a lot of ways to do it. So let's say this is operating like a list, and you can do a list uh, comprehension just for i in, and then do um, if chapter. Is in I. You can just do one. Okay, and just sum all of them. Okay, that's 22 as well. So the two approach is the same, it's just uh, looping through the entire column. Okay. Well, there are a third approach, which is to use a function called dot string and then dot contains. Okay. If you do dot string, it means transform transforming everything into a string uh, in the pandas table. And then if you do dot contains and then chapter, it will just convert. Um, everything that contains the word chapter to true okay so if you do this okay you can sh you can see these are all the chapters like if you use the square mm -hmm. bracket to bound the entire thing and then put raw in front you're gonna show all the chapters okay or if you put like harry potter just put Harry, then it's gonna show you all the words, all the line that include the word Harry, okay? Or you can just check for anything, okay? Um, okay, let's skip this line. <clears throat> okay, alternatively, you can try to only get the index but this is a much, much um, bigger way, okay? It, the code is a lot um, more complex, but eventually you will end up getting a structure like this. So on the left, there will be your text, and on the right, there will be uh, the number of chapter. If you execute the whole thing, and then just do, um, sorry df dot chapter sorry okay basically I'm putting uh, the number of chapter on the side of every line so now um, I start to give some structure to this um, pandas data instead of just one column of complete completely noisy text 
I start to give um, like a chapter column for it, for it so you can easily filter by chapter so let's say you want to find everything for chapter 22 we can just do this df chapter oops there's no chapter 22 okay that's everything for chapter 2 okay uh, if you're curious of um, how can I get the chapter um, okay basically I'm doing something quite complex I'm doing this sorry okay I'm getting every one of these and then I'm getting the index of it and if you look at the code I'm getting dot index and then basically I'm looping okay the entire range of chapter index and then just append on on the list if the chapter equals to it and then I'm just concatenating it and it becomes the entire uh, chapter column okay but don't worry about this just to show you that you can do it this way okay <clears throat> okay the next uh, question is how to split by sentence okay and this one is more uh, challenging because for now your uh, data frame it's a table Okay, and everything is separated. So the next thing you have to do is you have to recombine your uh, text. And how you do it is just df.text and try to merge everything with maybe a space. Okay, if you do this, probably it will be very long. But now you put the entire Harry Potter into one variable. So let's say this is a very long text. Okay, and then um, for every uh, sentence, you can be split by footstool, by uh, exclamation mark, or by question marks. Okay, so uh, this line is just a uh, a method called regular uh, regular expressions I think yeah that's how, how, how we call it and basically this regular expression is to split your text by uh, these three um, characters okay and once you split it oops, sorry and you have to import the library as well Okay, once you split it, there will be like 8,900 uh, sentences. Yep. Uh, the one before, yeah. this one. I think that's specifically for uh, regular expressions. So, um, okay, let's try if we can do it without the R. Okay, actually you can. Okay, so for uh, regular expressions, I think the standard practice, or if you're using an older version of Python, people do like one more character in here to indicate that it's regular expressions. But I think for newer versions, you don't have to do it. Okay. Uh, sorry, why is the past simple stand for? You mean this one? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, Okay. Like to be completely honest, I copy this online. Okay, okay. and um, regular expression is like a very different approach than Python. And okay, I just did it for convenience. But if you want to do it without regular expressions, 
there's a different way to do it. Oh. But I, I can't answer the questions. Okay. Yeah. But mm, okay, maybe I'll do some research and I'll let oh. you know. Sorry about that. <laughs> um. Okay, if you want to do it without regular expressions, probably you can do it like this. Um, long text dot split. Okay, this way you split everything by a full stop, and then you can do like for I like for every one of them split by um, question marks and do something like this and then you can just keep on adding um, your separator and then you can split by um, multiple different characters but this way is more complex because you're doing a list of list. Okay. And well, usually I, I would do it with uh, extra functions like this. And then okay, a for b in l for a in b. Okay, I'll send you guys the code for this. Uh, if you don't understand this uh, flatten function, it is just a function to flatten a um, nested list. Okay, if there's a list of lists, then this is a very uh, handy function to separate it. Okay, now this should be a, a nested loop, nested uh, list, but now it becomes one level of list. You can see there are two level before, but once you apply these functions, it becomes a flat list. Okay, and that's how you um, how you can make this uh, separated by um, you know by sentence. Okay, um, any questions? Right here? Is it is it very hard to understand this part? Is it okay? <coughs> so you don't have to define A and B for using the letter. Yeah, this is just a um, Okay, if you want to understand this, try Basically, I'm just turning this for a sublist in L and then for item in sublist, append everything. And if you write this whole thing into one line, it becomes uh, A for B in L for A in B. I know it's not very uh, intuitive, but I just remember this. Because like, this uh, function is very handy, so I just remember uh, it whenever I need it. Okay, probably will be useful for you guys later on as well. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> the whole point for this exercise is to make you um, get familiar, get familiarized with how to use pandas to restructure your data. Okay. <clears throat> And uh, if you look at the new piece of code, this is basically just counting how many um, how many words in each chapter. Okay. Again, this is a very long piece of code. Let's try to run it. Okay, and probably you don't understand why I need to do it. Why do I need to count the number of sentences for every chapter? And the reason is because I want to plot something like this. Okay, if I want to have a over, quick overview of the entire book without reading a book, 
this would be a nice way to uh, visualize um, you know, how the book is distributed. And right now, if you have read uh, Harry Potter, you probably have, like Harry Potter has a very standardized um, flow. In the uh, starting chapters, like everything goes smoothly, slowly, and right till the end. Usually, there will be a very long uh, last chapter, and right before it, the last chapter, there will be a um, pro probably be a scene that you fight with the big boss. So you can probably somehow see the um, entire you know flow of Harry Potter by staring at the graph. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, you got a different number. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm. Let me have a look. <laughs> If I change this to zero, oh, for the upper one, I only count everything with the chapter, so I missed out the first few, um, like the title. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, again, if you want to split everything by word. Uh, you do the same trick. Uh, you combine every single list as a very long string, and then instead of just splitting by uh, um, by full stop, exclamation mark, and question marks, now you split by everything. Okay, you can split by um, comma or even space or um, like any separator you can think of. And this way you can count the number of words. Okay. And then in this way you can count how many number of words mm -hmm. from each chapter. And you can plot a very similar graph. Okay, based on the chapters and the number of words. Okay. And now we can try to find out which are the most uh, popular words. Okay. And you can do it this way. Okay, just split it by space, and then you have a very long, um, long word, a uh, long list. And then what you can do is you can do append this there frame again. Okay, now it becomes a long there frame with just one row and remember you can use our value counts okay now you can see how the words are distributed so you can see uh, the word the is the most popular and like harry is like the third most popular words and you can see a different character and you can also realize a lot of um, like meaningless words happens a lot uh, in a novel like the word the, to, and, was, was said, you okay, a lot of them are meaningless okay, in uh, natural language uh, processing this is called a stop word okay, these are the words that doesn't give you a lot of meaning and when you try to do some word um, model you have to filter them out Okay. If not, there will be a lot of noise uh, in your data sets. Okay? When you use value counts, yes. when you use uh, value counts, yes. it automatically, automatically sort. Uh, yes, it automatically sort by the most popular ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But honestly, don't worry about this entire okay long piece of code, because mm. the problem itself is not easy to solve and and this is a very specific problem so don't don't worry if you can't solve this uh, Harry Potter homework okay 
Okay, the other question is how do you visualize the uh, interaction between different characters? Okay, first of all, we just want to count the number of uh, characters uh, that exist. Okay. And let's go back to our original data frame. Okay, that's our original data frame. Um, instead of using the functions I give you, there should be a better way to visualize it. Um, you can do it this way, df.text and then dot and you can put it a list and then you can how should I do it? you can join the entire thing and make it a very long list And then you have to count how many times how many times Harry Potter appear. Mm, okay, you can do mm, okay, probably that's not the best way to do it. Okay, let's try it with my function first. Okay. Basically the function is quite complex again. It's just for every chapter, split it and check if the character is inside the chapter. And again, loop it for every single chapter. But once you have written these functions, you can just simply put the character names inside the functions. Probably to some error okay that's how it works so basically I, I just loop through every single character's name and put it inside the functions I've written and then I just plot it out uh, using dot plot and for y it's just uh, the column for every uh, characters. If you look at the Harry Potter data frame, okay, basically my last functions try to create a graph like this. Uh, on the left hand side you have the chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then for every character it has a count. Okay, the reason for me to make it this format is because I have to put it to the pandas data frame and plot it out and I have to specify which uh, axis or which chapter oh sorry, or which column I want to put as a y y axis okay and if you okay if you look at the graph you can see Harry is very um, okay it's appear very often and then you can see uh, Ron, Harmony would be the second highest and the rest of the character would be um, very low. Okay. And you can uh, normalize the word count by the total number of sentence. Okay, because if you look at um, just a hard number you don't have a very good sense, like the proportion of um, of times the Harry appear in every sentence. So if you divide it by the total number of sentence, now everything turns to percentage. And you can see uh, in the first chapter, 35% of the sentences has Harry Potter appear. Okay. And even though the two graphs look the same. Or very similar. Um, now this makes a little bit more sense. Okay. Okay. The next uh, functions just tell you how how to do the interaction terms. 
So if you care about whether or not two characters appear in the same sentence, just run these functions. And basically the two functions work very similar, but this one just do this logic. Okay, character one in sentence and character two in sentence. Okay, otherwise it will become zero. And then you just create a new um, data frame. Okay, now it creates a very similar structure. Again, it will be Harry, Harmony, Harry, Roan, Harmony, Roan, etc. It's just the number of times these combinations appear together. Okay. And then if you select the three most important characters, you can see where they tend to fluctuate at the same rate. Okay. And if you pick out Harmony and Ron, you can see these two pairs interact almost the same as the main character Harry and Harmony. And as you know, these two characters eventually get married. So probably the reason why is because they interact a lot. Okay. And as you may know, this uh, Voldemort is the uh, main bad characters. And this is how they like how the um, interaction looks like. And you can do all different things for any any words. Like you can do it with uh, locations as well. So these are all the locations in Harry Potter. And if you do what I did previously, it's just a very similar visualizations of how frequent they appear. Okay, and this is just an, well, an example of how to visualize something that is um, not a number, because everything that's that's number is very easy to visualize. But this is an example to visualize uh, characters. Okay. Um, okay, and then we lead to. Uh, the main topic for today, today, which is uh, data visualizations. Okay. Uh, if you click on the link, it will bring you to a different um, PowerPoint. Okay. 